Hi there. Now for this question, we've got to compile matrices that give these following transformations. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't had a chance to uh, do it yet, just give you a moment to pause the video. And as usual, when you come back, you can check your methods on working against mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So I'm assuming that uh, you are fairly familiar with the methods involved with compiling matrices for matrix transformations. If not, do check out my video tutorials on this. Essentially though, what I do is I always draw axes and on them put mark on the unit base vectors. So for the first one here, I'm just going to start with the unit base vector 1, 0. Always start with that one. So got 1, 0 here. And we're looking to see where this moves when we reflect it in the line y equals minus x, which is a diagonal line inclined something like that. OK, so where would this move to? Well, it's going to move somewhere down here, OK, on the y-axis. That's going to be the new vector, and that vector would be 0, minus 1. And that forms the first column of our answer, 0, minus 1. Next, we take the unit base vector up in the positive sense on the y-axis. That one is 0, 1, and we look to see where this goes under a reflection in this line. Well, it's going to move over to here. All right. So what's that vector going to be? Well, it's going to be minus 1, 0. And that forms the second column here, minus 1, 0. And there's our answer. OK, so that's the first one. Now, the next one is a rotation of 135 degrees anticlockwise about the origin. So again, what I'd want to do is just draw the axis. OK, so I'll we'll have our x-axis and y-axis. And we start off with the unit base vector, 1, 0. And Think about where this is going to move if we rotate it 135 degrees anti-clockwise. Well, it's going to turn around 90 and then 135 degrees is a further 45 degrees round from the 90. So that's it there. Now, we need to get the vector itself. So we're going to need to work out what the x and y components are going to be. Now, if I zoom in here, OK, let's just draw it up here, this triangle. We've got a right angle triangle, 45 degree right angle triangle. OK, that one's 45 degrees there. OK, that's that angle in there. And we know that this length must be one unit. And that means by trigonometry, if we're to look at this side, this will be 1 times the cosine of 45 degrees, which is going to be 1 over root 2. Or if you do it on the calculator, it will rationalise that, obviously, and you end up with 2 over root 2. It's an isosceles triangle, so this side 2 will be 1 over root 2. So that's the two sides, then, of our triangle. So when it comes to working out the vector here, OK, of our transformation, then that's going to be, in the x direction, that's going to be minus 1 over root 2. And for the y value here, it's just going to be positive 1 over root 2. So that's the first part. Next. We need to work out the second column, which is the result of considering where the unit base vector 0, 1 goes in this transformation. Well, it's going to turn around into this quadrant down here. It's going to look like this, OK? Now, again, this is going to be an exact same size triangle as we've got above, It'll be a reflection in the x-axis. So it's easy now just to work out our 
components. For x, it's going to be minus 1 over root 2. And for y, it's going to be minus 1 over root 2. OK, so uh, there's our matrix then that represents a rotation of 135 degrees anticlockwise about the origin. OK, so we now move on to the next part. Let's just mark in that that was part B. So the next part then for, is part C. And we've got to work out the matrix then that represents a reflection in the line y equals minus x followed by a rotation of 135 degrees anticlockwise about the origin. Now, suppose I call this matrix RE for reflection and this one, let's say I call it RO for the rotation. Then what I'm thinking of is that we do a reflection in the line y equals minus x, first of all. So if I had some kind of shape which I formed in a matrix, then if I was transforming this by a reflection, I would need to pre-multiply this with the reflection matrix. And this would give me the new shape. Then I follow it with a rotation. In other words, I pre-multiply this, okay, by RO, the rotation matrix. So this is what I'd be thinking about then in doing this question. And the answer then is just going to be RO multiplied with RE. And if you do that, this is what you should get. RO times RE you should get this as your transformation matrix. So I hope that's given you an idea anyway on how to approach that question.